All of our productions at GCTV are brought to you in part by The Arbors at Greenfield, assisted living community providing a unique balance of independence and personal care that offers residents and families the most precious gift of all, peace of mind. Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. gcc.mass.edu. Greenfield Savings Bank, visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com or call them at 413-422-1143. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortunema.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. People's United Bank. Located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all the productions at Greenfield Community Television. GCTV for inviting me to uh, exhibit my work here and in particular Scott uh, McPherson who is the director here, Philippe who is my fearless leader and I really appreciate all the help that he has given me uh, this year. So I'm going to talk about my exhibition here on the walls throughout the studio and the title is Whispers. Now, um, also, and I want to thank everyone who's here. The title is Whispers, and that's the series, because art has a voice. And you might say, well, what are, what are whispers? What's whispering? Well, the whispers are actually found in, and I just have two pieces here, in the uh, art. And the art appears to be whispering. And what they're whispering is about the fact that they are endangered species or extinct. And so that was the whole idea of this exhibition, this body of work. This series is based on conceptual art that I use. And the conceptual piece of it is that it's all built around the concept of there are endangered species. And what that species is about, what are they saying, what has happened through time, what happens to a whole species when there might have been millions or thousands, you know, there could be many pieces to this whole story. And so each one is standing on the concept of the ecology, the environment, human intervention, or the, uh, specifically, are they endangered or are they extinct in a species of the natural world? And so we have to, the concept evolves around all those topics, and there are many. And it's, it's all based on that whole idea of a species can become extinct. And right now, many are endangered of becoming extinct. So I want to talk about the art that's here. And I want you to see that they have a size. And they're all the same size and the same dimensions. Each piece is 30 inches by 40, two inches deep. And so these are large, meaning it's a large issue. And the colors are muted as 
are the, uh, the endangered species. Their voices are muted. And if you look into them, if you look in deep beyond this, um, I hope you're getting me okay. I'll, I'll come back over here. Um, you can see that if you're close up, you can look into the work and you can see that there's a history. If you look at the history of these pieces, you look behind the surface and you can see what's happening. You see, here's a line, here's a something going on, here's something else happening. And you can see a calligraphy. And this calligraphy is the whisper. It is the written in the wind, if you will. It's what's happening. And so even though they're uh, primarily um, white or an off-white, you can see the lines that go in. And the brush strokes also speak to you because they're not all complete. They start one place and then they end someplace else. And they become softer and more and more quiet than they started out. So a brush stroke may be very strong, very thick, very powerful, and then come down to disappear as what happens when there's an endangered species. They start strong, but then they fade, they disappear. And the brush strokes are meant to do that, to communicate that idea of it's becoming more difficult to survive. And, and this one also, you can look in, I see some blue behind here, I see what's happening with the colors. There's some more uh, color of perhaps a, a coat of fur, it could be a shell, it could be anything. And the species around here are either a plant, some kind of plant, some kind of animal. It could be a bird, it could be a turtle, it could be a weed, it could be a lot of things. And so each one has its gracefulness that it tries to hang on to, but it also regresses into the quiet. And that's an important piece to remember. Now also another piece of the whisper is the title of each piece. Now the title of this one is John Muir, 1890s. And that's when John Muir was writing about what this is about. What is the subject here? What did John Muir write? What did he say? What did he propose to the public? So he was a voice also. He whispered in the beginning, you know, I think there's something wrong. And that's another whisper that happens in the painting is the title. And each one has another title. The title of this one over here is Maxine Cumin. 1970s. So, and Maxine Human is a regional writer and poet and person who is very involved with animals, very involved with what's going on. And so, to know more about what this piece could be about, you could read about Maxine Human. Now, I don't have the titles and the subjects here. So it's up to the viewer to know already or to go to a database in the library. There's a library right across the street. And so you can go and you can look up. You can go to the databases and you can pinpoint what did Maxine Kuhn write about in those days. And that would give you a very good idea as to what the subject of this is. Because I'm not painting the item, the animal, the sentient being. I'm painting the idea, the concept of extinction via the title, the person who wrote. 
Now, I did write a couple of poems, and here is one, and I'll just read it to you since it's very difficult to read, and it's about uh, the endangered. And the title of this poem is Solitude. Solitude. Time hurls its distance in water, sand, soil, all flapping against the whole box in a singular breath of weight. Hemmed in, pushed at warm's parchment, edges frayed at waiting margins, from the sign of a long blade twisted and turned from hurt. In this room one searches each cause of mind Life's battle, life held in basic breath, that finds fullness beyond its walls. Now they sit in silence, hopeful at a longitude of discretion toward their latitude, survival, into a heart. So that is this one. And I do have another one that I, I would like to read to you also. It's not on the wall, but I think it uh, a very appropriate poem that I, I thought that I had written uh, in the past. And it doesn't have a name right yet. But this is the poem. It is again about all these things that we think about when we think about the My best bud silks across the luscious waves and dunes, spots the shore, forks the fire, spears marshmallows, eats beer, seeing that no one is watching to see their sand or falls. It seems open for change, for finance, whatever you can think will work and then They'll come the asphalt, garbage, strewn across town's walks, because some think of it that way, but not the fish or whales. Sometimes we forest, or just plain gaze under the reddest oaks, muscled birds, just because they are so strong, and we know we are not. Walk a silent path across their stones and needles, never make a sound. Listen to the waving, the uh, wait, waving leaves. I'm sorry. Listen to the waving leaves that won't let go. Look up to fill our eyes with ruddy birds that keep and fly and know. So that kind of puts us in another little place in comparison to all the trees and the beauty and the water and all the animals who can do all kinds of things that we cannot, yet we join them and we like to be with them. So we have to take care of them. Um, I also wanted to, um, I didn't know, let's see, I read the other poem, and so I didn't know if there are any uh, questions, uh, and if not, I would say there is on the wall here a, uh, a little direction. There's an introduction to the Whisper series, and it talks about what it's about. And at the bottom, it talks about how you can find um, what you're looking for. What maybe is each one of these? What does it portray? And how you can do that. And um, so I invite everyone to do that. And uh, I hope that you enjoy each and every piece. Thank you so very much.
All of our productions at GCTV are brought to you in part by The Arbors at Greenfield, assisted living community providing a unique balance of independence and personal care that offers residents and families the most precious gift of all, peace of mind. Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. gcc.mass.edu. Greenfield Savings Bank, visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com or call them at 413-422-1143. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortuneMA.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. People's United Bank. Located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all the productions at Greenfield Community Television.